Hello and welcome back to yet another episode of the Youth Program. My name is Anjali and today I'll be sharing the space, the screen space with someone so special and talented. She is not just a singer and a songwriter of a very renowned band, The Fourth Element, but also a music teacher and a certified meditation practitioner. She has not only written beautiful poems, but also released her first ever book in the year 2020 in the month of August. And this is her beautiful book that you must read and I swear you're going to fall in love with it. So let's hear about her book from the very, very own Sara Lee. Hello and thank you so much for having me here. Uh, where do I begin? Uh, music has always, for me, everything started from music. Music has always been my first love. And I think from there uh, I eventually evolved into writing and uh, writing my own songs first because I always thought it was ideal for a musician to, to be able to sing, to perform mm. their own songs, right? So I always, I always wanted to write my own songs first and then from there it evolved into writing poems and quotes and things like that. And uh, it, is, it is only because of music that's what, that's, I'm here because, oh my God. I'm so what inspired you to write this book, Unrequited? What pushed you into releasing the book? I mean, I'm sure you've been writing from a very long time. Like we have known like how young you've started your career. So what pushed you to release for releasing your book last year? So writing a book has always been a dream of mine. I, I always have this bucket list where I write a, write a book, plant trees and the rest I still have to figure that out, that out because uh, and writing a book has always been number one in my bucket list and I never knew how to begin you know because obviously I write I write every day about my experiences and everything that I go through but I, to compile everything of that into a book never crossed my mind so I decided to do a little bit of research here and there and just see like you know what's in these days and what are the kids reading these days and then I really resonated to the ones who write very short poems and short quotes because naturally you can't really understand a very like a two-page poems these days right it takes right. a lot of effort and a lot of uh, brain damage I guess so I resonated more into writing really short but very uh, straight to the heart, straight to the point kind of uh, poems. So I think it was last year, just I think three months before the lockdown when that this was when I was traveling and then I was writing a lot then too. And then uh, I wanted to know, okay, how does one publish a, a book? Because I just didn't have any idea about how to go about this. So I Googled, how do you publish a book? That was uh, okay, one, find a pub, have the material ready to find a publishing house. And so, yeah, and then it, everything just kind of fell into place. I wrote to one publishing house, that was uh, Blue Rose Publishers. And then they asked me to send in my synopsis and uh, just a sample of my book of, and I still didn't have my book ready yet. I still had to compile everything into a one, like the book that we have now. And then I just sent her some of the, my assistant then, this was Monica, and then uh, I sent her just about three poems from the book and they said, you're, you're selected, you, we're go we want to publish you, and that's and how we... And how was the feeling all I don't, of I'm that? I was still I mean, traveling then, I, I had excessive motion sickness, <laughs> and then I came back home and I was like, wait, this is actually happening, I have to pub... And then they gave me a time period for about uh, another three months for me to complete the book, but then lockdown happened. So every th And then I think the lockdown was kind of a, a blessing for me because I had a... Ample of time uh, to do that. Enough time for yeah. me to really think about, to think this through again and then like have enough material to, for a book. So I, that's how it came into being unrequited. Reading some of your materials, there are certain poems like you've written beautifully about how love can be. You've written about nature and it truly showed if it's in there in your bucket list, planting trees. You've really put it out in words and it, uh, it's like you can sing what you've written and it's beautiful Thank and you. it's not just you but people reading it can do that too. Also I've come across one of your material where you have uh, mentioned and I think it will push and inspire people. Uh, I mean we've known lockdown has really affected some people in a bad way. For some it was blessing, some it was not so much of a blessing and that particular poem it was so beautiful. I mean even people fighting with uh, mental health 
it was uh, it was it's a bliss if they read that so what what made you write that and it was so beautifully written it came out so beautifully so what was what made you come up with that honestly speaking i am uh, an advocate for mental health i feel like especially in these times uh, and the circumstances that we're all in i think a lot of people have just gone downhill from wherever they were placed so i think for me to be able to write about them because honestly speaking i will not say i am 100% mentally healthy myself because i think whatever the situation that we've all been i think it has affected us some way somehow yeah, you know that's true. and i and i think for me to be able to write something like that i have to feel it myself because honestly speaking for a very very long time like last as a musician coming from a musician point of view we want playing we want earning and i think when you don't when you don't earn you just naturally just become very very down or like it just just ruins your mental health no that is very so true. i feel like that kind of uh it affected me and for me to write something i need to feel it also i'm not saying oh my god my mental health is horrible man like uh, but for me to be able to resonate to a few people that that are going through a lot of problems in their lives and then from i i know it's selfish for me to say this but i get inspired from pain from hurt i will of course write about love and write about the happy things in life but i feel like people resonate more when you write about their problems yeah. their pain and what their pain and the hurt that they're going through right so uh that particular poem came from that space so i f i feel i resonate more when i uh, i feel i can express myself more if i'm feeling a certain kind of pain and hurt and That's i think it's it's really beautiful because um ever since lockdown and with social media and with young people i mean there are many young people also who are having uh, who are actually fighting a battle every day exactly. mentally it's not just about being physically ill and you have written so many things like you know it can push them to bring their uh, their their talent out maybe or just to bring the dust themselves up and get back up and work or exactly. you know do anything just to go on and i think that is something really really beautiful and it is such a contribution to the society because till date i mean there are some people who don't want to talk about mental health exactly. but you have you did bring it out so beautifully and it's brave and it's just so so inspiring i mean thank you, thank you for doing that Thank It you. is really, really wonderful. So, moving from that, uh, so tell us about your uh, experience. Uh, you have not just uh, performed in our state, but you have performed internationally as well. So, how did that start, and how did it go? Like everything put together, maybe. I think uh, yes, Fourth Element has been blessed with uh, the leader. I must say, uh, Rebor. He he gets it done. It's like uh, it's. we we would not think about all of this you know like contacting people or getting ourselves mm -hmm. out there selling ourselves out there because uh it's difficult you know it's it's difficult to literally sit down on your computer and do some research and things like that because especially if you want to play abroad because these days nobody really cares anymore like who who to invite and this and that you have to be one very talented too you have to have very good resources and rebar that way has been putting himself out there right so naturally these uh, i mean like all these abroad gigs has happened through him he none of us do the work or anything like that because uh, but putting on that much work of writing wonderful songs I, that's a lot I of did, work but i it is somehow but then like i would never think of doing what he does so which is why i think we're very very blessed to have bari bor in our group uh, he's the leader co-founder of fourth element and he just does he just gets the job done my job is to just write songs and look like a clown on stage sometimes and just like you know it it I will not agree to that as <laughs> senior performances and you look amazing because you're interacting with the crowd you're you're feeling your music you're making the crowd you know feel the music and just enjoy jazz and jazz is just so beautiful and you get it right so Thank that you. is lovely as well so how did you uh, meet the band the band members how did you guys like come together and like right now you are a they like, can amazing band so to say thank you and how did you like come in together how did you meet them how did things go on 
Uh, I was about 15 years old. This was when I first started singing also. I, I sang in school when I was about 10 through 15. I was about 15 years old when I first met Baribor. This was uh, yeah, years ago. So I had to record a demo and uh, I, did, I, I didn't know who to speak with. And, and I honestly just didn't know anybody to, you know, who to call and this and that. I think, I don't know, I met Baribor by default also, I guess. We had first gone to Barudi's place. Then he sent us to Baribor's place. And then from then on, he just, you know, like uh, started calling me for gigs and doing very small projects first. And then from there, he, he just said, what? you want to sing for a band? And then I said, of course, that's like my lifelong dream, you know? And then uh, Fourth Element first started with uh, Clarence on drums, Matthew on bass, and Starley on guitar, and Baribor on uh, keys, and it was vocals me. So w we went traveling or performing very small, small shows here in and, in and around the city and the town. And then from there, we kept on changing our members, you know. So the present members we have today, we have now is Jeff on bass. And we also have Mewan Ki. It's like a huge family now. And uh, Mewan Ki. And we have Paul and we have uh, Sam on drums. And we have another vocal vocalist who's Amabel. And then we have Amit on guitar. So through the 15 years that we've been performing, we've been changing or whoever's wants to come and play for fourth element is free to do so you know there's no restriction always welcoming, yeah. Yeah. always welcoming people so i think the present members we have now is a process of that entire journey just taking you know? in, yeah. just taking in good, everybody and good. then you're, i think you're taking and bringing in new people every time there's a change but something that does not change is the essence and of how every time you have a powerful impact of every time you've had shows. I mean, I've seen some of your shows and they're wonderful. Thank you. So, and how is, how is your, how are your family into this like, journey? Like, you know, you started so young and, you know, being a girl, if you were traveling and all that, how are your family into with all of this? I, I think I was always the rebel in the house, you know, being the youngest from my mom's side and my dad's side. Uh, I've always been rebellious, I think. I just didn't like education. <laughs> it's like, it's, I, it, uh, so I think uh, slowly, obviously I was very young then, but I think slowly, slowly they started to accept that, you know what, this is what she wants to do, let her do it. But obviously, in the, like, we live in a society where, oh, no, government job, yeah. that's it, right? So, uh, but then, uh, obviously, who will think of a government job when you're 15? So, you know, I think uh, they took it as a face also when I was uh, 15, like, you know, that she'll get over it. Yeah. Just let her do it for three or four months, she'll get over it. But then it just went on and on. So, and I guess, girl. yeah, and then they just, I think they just started to accept that, you know what, let her do what she wants. It's like that. So, I, they've been very, very supportive. Although, like I said, in the initial stages, it was like, come home by nine o'clock or like, you know, like yeah. you're not allowed to travel here and there or like, so uh, at first it was like that. But then obviously, it, like they, and it's so important, it was so important for them to know that I was in safe with the safe, I mean, like safe people. Let me just put that out there. Like the, my band members are very mature and like the, they have their own families and like, you know. So it, for them to know that I am in safe hands was very, very important too. So I think they stopped restricting me. They never, they never restricted me, and obviously. I'm proud like, of you exactly. now. I mean, from now, where you are right now, they now must be really proud of you. Everything is like, this is what I do. It's like, okay, they're used to it now. Like seeing me travel all the time and coming back home and everything, you know, it's, it's a natural process for them Put now. Together, so, yeah. yes. So from not liking education to educating young ones. <laughs> I know this is so how is that? Like you know, it's like completely the opposite. How how does that make you feel? Like being a teacher and being a teacher is also something really great because you have your hands in the future. You yeah. are literally um, bringing up the future. You are mm. you're shaping the future, the future of music since you're exactly. a music teacher. Mm. So how is that processing now and? I I never ever thought because my sister is a teacher she's been teaching for a very very long time and then like when I look at her job and everything that she goes through I'm like forget it I'm not becoming I'm never going to become a teacher but then uh, I think it was earlier on this year when my friend told me do you want to teach music because uh, and then I said yeah I can teach music 
And then, but I've never had experiences before, like teaching someone or teaching music or anything like that. So I, uh, there's this school who I, which I work for. It's in Bangalore. It's called JMS. They contacted me and then like, you know, would you like to teach and things like that? I said, I can try. I obviously didn't take this very seriously. I thought same thing, like the same reaction that my uh, family had family when I first you, started yeah. the singing. Same reaction. I was like, I, I have a feeling I'm going to do this for only about two weeks and then I'm just going to get over it. But then it, it, I really loved it. Like, you know, like, because I was literally teaching children what I love. It's like what, what I love and my, what has given me so much, right? So much of everything. I was like, I'm literally teaching them and like putting in seats into their brains about how to go about music. And naturally, some of them are very young. So the only thing I do is like sing rhymes and things like that. But even from there, I get a lot of joy because I'm, one, I'm doing the, it's I'm a bliss. exactly. It's I'm a doing bliss. things you're, that you're I, I'm doing, doing the, what, you love. what I love, and then, and I also speak to them about like my experiences. And I'm the, the bigger students. That is, I'm, I speak to them about my experiences, and to speak to complete strangers first, and now they like uh, resonate with me some way somehow when I speak to them about my experiences, my journey with music, and I. That's one thing that I really love also. Besides teaching music, teaching music is very basic. So everything is by the book because mm -hmm. when you teach something like music, obviously, like I try and incorporate a lot of my experiences and my the things that I've learned throughout the years. So it's nice to speak to them about my experiences when they really want to uh, to to know about my experiences. Like, I, do you have concerts? Wow! Like you know, everything it becomes so n and You're it's so pure. Them. Like You're everything really is so pure with them. my students. So. I think that's the only reason why I really love uh, teaching now and I'm so so glad to have this opportunity to be to be able to teach and really influence them into a uh, this light no so I'm very very glad so uh, Sarah so you've written so many things and but you've only published one book is it is there anything else that you're still working on or would love to work on maybe for the future I uh, so as soon as I published uh, unrequited last year I decided, you know what, there's no stopping. So I decided to just continue on from there. So I decided to write uh, my second book that is Soul Flowers, which is not published yet. And I have no idea if, it, if I am going to publish it because, uh, so I think it was about four months after I released uh, Unrequited. I think in, this, in, a, in that, during that four months, I completed writing Soul Flowers and then after I completed writing Soul Flowers, I was like, okay, I'm going to take a break, a uh, break from writing, a break from everything. So, and I had ample amount of time to edit, to proofread and things like that. But I, there was no push or pull of desire to really work on it, you know. So I think it was just very recently that I, I just told myself, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to publish this book. Maybe I have the the manuscript ready, everything like that. So I deleted everything. I just decided to delete. I mean, Why delete? Exactly. But then I was like, you know what? I just don't see it as my second book. I just don't see Soul Flowers as my second book. Uh, I think that space, to be in that space, I think it took a lot from me, you know, because I was just going through the stuffs that I I, I wrote. Although they're very beautiful to me, and they mean a lot. But then... I just couldn't see it as I just couldn't see it as my second book so I was like you know what delete everything and for me to move on from something I just have to remove everything of what's left of everything right so I decided to remove everything although I still have the handwritten book with me I still have a lot of uh, I because when I write I'm very I'm very old school I write everything yeah, pen paper just write right? it yeah. down black and white everything yeah so I still have some of the stuff that I wrote and then uh, yeah so now I just have to Start if you fresh. Could share like a little about what was your second book about that? Like what was it about the essence of it? Like what was in it? Okay, so flowers basically from the title itself. So I speak a lot from my soul. I resonate a lot with my soul. So even with people, if the, I can just tell if they have very beautiful. I think everybody has a beautiful soul. So everything for me is from the soul, from the heart, right? So and the flowers are thoughts. So basically, these are thoughts from my soul. So. And it's also a continuation of unrequited. Everything is based on love. So and uh, and a lot of it is based on the surrounding and the environment that I'm in. And I I have 
for that I'll call it was a face also even though I resonate a lot with it right now all like till today a face kind of a situation but I I am not in that face mm -hmm. anymore I've pulled myself out of that situation which is why I just couldn't see myself I just can't see myself publishing this book or see it as my second book and uh it's a jumble of everything. But it's a it's mixture just still of very close to your heart. Exactly. It, it is. is. So I, I think you should still work on that. Exactly. So and now I just have, uh, I have a, a lot of clarity now, like on how I want to see my second book, like, you know, uh, so I know exactly how I want it. So I know where to start. So any day now, so <laughs> like, you know, I'm taking it very slow. I want it, like I said, I want everything that I do. To have to travel and to go on this path with me on this journey as uh, you know to take its own course not rush into anything because honestly speaking I think soul flowers was a, a rush everything was done in such a rush because, because you were in a rush exactly just because like that book. adrenaline was there yeah. right oh wow unrequited and now suddenly I have to come up with a new book and then like uh, everything was done in a rush and now I just want everything to take its own time to happen very naturally and I think uh, it will happen. I th Speaking of like having a clear mind and, and having to follow the path of taking something slow and like you know let it flow and you know take it naturally. How d does this have like anything to do with your certification like with uh, meditation? Has that uh, how did that pull you in or you pulled it in into your life? Is it because you started off at a very young age and to be honest your hands are pretty full you're doing so many things in the same time and mm. to handle and to manage all of that must be must be tough on you exactly so how do you cope with all that does your meditation help? i yeah honestly speaking i think the only thing that gets me by number one is prayer and number two meditation and music is also meditation for me and i think uh, yes i meditation really plays a huge role in my life because I'm number one I love I am a lover of peace and I love everything to be very calm and collected collective collected yeah I can see that yeah <laughs> can you I can get that vibe from you like you're so calm you're so composed like it's, it's just beautiful it's actually so peaceful like you know thank that's you. really nice thank you so yes the meditation practice meditation has always been something that I do on on a regular and I was thinking, you know what, if I can achieve this myself, this calmness, this peace, to look at life from a different perspective, to just, uh, and uh, one thing that I realized through meditation is, I think people are so involved in achieving things, right? In, are true. so involved into achieving things or wanting things that other people have. But rarely do we have the time to reflect on ourselves, to really think, okay, is this what I really want? Is this what I really need? Or is this... And sometimes we complain so much about the surroundings that we have, right? The surrounding, everything that we're surrounded by. We complain so much about this. Instead, why can't we look at the, our surroundings and the people from a, the people who resonate, I mean, like who surround you from a different perspective, right? And that is one thing that I learned from meditation. It's how to look at what I want. Do I really need it? So, and I, the practitioner came from that point of view. I was like, if I can achieve this, you know, it, although it's a very, very slow process, if I can achieve this, if I can teach someone else to somehow look at life from a different perspective, do the things that they love, do the things that they do with a lot of love, right? And I, that's the only thing that I want to achieve out of, uh, from when I started, uh, I mean, my training for, uh, to become a meditation practitioner. So that's the only thing I want, like, you know, for people to look at things on, from a different perspective. That, that's a lot and that's actually something very solid for our viewers. I mean, for what she said, you can, I'm sure many of you out there can relate to that. And so how, how would you like to, like, you know, give our viewers maybe, like, you know, maybe a gist or something small that they should practice maybe in their life and trying to just cope up with their daily hardships and, and everything? I think number one is to just be, to just live in the moment, to just be in the moment, to not think about what's coming next, right? If we can take that time, just five minutes per day, just, just sit with yourself and just think and just live in the moment and just acknowledge the things that are happening around you, right? Because everything is done out of, 
I don't know, resentment, out of sure. anger, out of jealousy, right? In these times. If you can just omit all of that and just be with yourself and just think very clearly of what is what it is that you really need in your life and if it is important to you. You know, and then move from there. If Not it really isn't just to compete yeah, with exactly. Others. If it if it if it doesn't bear you any importance, move on. There are a thousand more other opportunities in life that it'll come to you. I feel like opportunities and doors and pathways will open to you when the time is right. When you when life says you really need it, it'll just come to you. I feel like I we should all live with that mantra, knowing that my opportunity will come. I, I just need to stay still and really focus on what it is that I really need in my life. Oh, that, that's really wonderful. I mean, that's really, really wonderful for all of yours also. And I hope you all also follow that. And I'm sure it's going to make a difference because I, for sure, I'm going to do that every day. Thank thanks you. to you. Uh, where have you done your course from? I did my uh, I did my meditation practitioner slash teacher under Graham Nichols. He's the owner of the Priority Academy in the UK. I did my course for roughly three weeks and uh, I, I still have a lot to learn. I still, I feel like I'm still not very ready to teach people mm -hmm. or like, you know, to, to, just to guide people under meditation and things like that. I still like, although I still, I do that with very close friends. Uh, I, I still feel like there's a lot that I can learn because meditation is a lifelong practice. You don't fail, you don't achieve. I mean, like, although you achieve a lot of peace of, peace of mind and things like that, you don't fail in it. So I still feel like, yeah, I still feel like I have a lot to learn and a lot to practice for me to be able to reach out to people you know, on, that, on that level. That's there. I mean, that's, that's wonderful. So speaking of close friends, I'm sure like you've been into this for so long and you've performed with so many other talented people. So what would you share some like, you know, with whom you love sharing the stage with maybe a um, songwriting buddy or someone who pushes you to write a little more, someone who has inspired you, maybe um, any other singer, like, you know, some people have like they worship Michael Jackson or Elvis, someone who is your inspiration like as a child, like, hmm. you know, you looked in the TV and be like, okay, I want to be that. I want to be that star and perform in stage. So who would that be? Uh, I think... Uh Performing on stage with Fourth Element is like one thing that I really, really love. I've not really gotten the opportunity to perform with a lot of our local artists here. Just a few of them. And I can't, I think it will be very selfish of me to name names. But uh, my child, I think my childhood, I was very inspired by Joss Stone. Still am. Mm -hmm. I, at one point of my life when I was younger, I just wanted to be her. So, you know, every time I went up, she's known for like being bare feet on stage, mm -hmm. right? So at one point in my life, I was like, nope, not wearing shoes today. So I would walk bare feet on stage. Yeah. So you've done that on stage? Yeah, yeah. Oh, like, because nice. she really inspired me to, you know, just become, because she is so free. She's so free on stage and she just doesn't really care about how she looks. And I, that's something really beautiful because I think in these times, like even when you watch TV or think, things like that, everyone's about image, you know, yeah, like, sure. it's like everyone's about image, it's not about their art anymore. So I, till today, I am very inspired by her because I think she's very, very free, like musically, like her personality and everything about her is just so free and I, that's, she's always inspired me ever since I was younger. That, that's great. So, I mean, you already have so much in your platter that you're doing. Besides all of that, that we have mentioned, is there something maybe a new hobby that you would like to have or you know something that you would love to learn because you seem to me like a person who's always wanting to learn and to grow mm. and learn new things and catch up with new things so is there anything else that you would like love to learn and like you know do it maybe try it i would really love to learn how to play the saxophone i've always i've always loved uh, I, I used to tell my bandmates you know what i'm going to marry a saxophone player and then and I was like, uh, no, not happening. Uh, I would really love to learn the saxophone musically. And uh, what else do I want to learn? I feel like I've learned everything, um, but it's, it's a growing process. I'm sure yeah. I'll wake up tomorrow and want to learn something. And if it really resonates with me, maybe I'll take it up again. So it's like that. I don't know what I, honestly speaking, I really don't know what I want to do next, mm -hmm. but it's let but it happen. You're open to the ideas exactly. and like yeah. you know if anything comes in you're, you're open to yeah. that. 
So uh, what what now? Like uh, with this lockdown, we haven't had like shows in a very long time. But then um, through social media, there are many young people also, you know, who are trying to grow into it. And you know, but how is how do you see with these young people getting into music, or maybe they are? Do you think they're moving out from maybe the traditional kind of music or the music with a soul? Like you know, music music is something which has a soul and purpose. Exactly. But these days, like we are seeing how the younger generation, they're, they're kind of slight, like tracking away from that. So how would you like to reshape that if you had the opportunity to do that? I would, uh, this is what I used to tell my students also. I feel like it's beautiful. I, I really appreciate the youngsters these days. I'm uh, coming, up with their, uh, coming up with music and following their dream and things like that. But uh, one thing that I'd really love for everyone to do, I mean like especially the younger generation music, musicians, I'd love for them to stop following the herd. You know, like I'd love for them to stop following the herd because it's it's a, all, of, I feel like music is a learning process again. It's like you, un, as time moves on, as time goes on, you really start listening to your own sound. And your sound is, is what makes you, right? It's not, because these days everyone is just like, oh my God, uh, what they see on television is what works for them, right? It's nothing about it resonates with your soul or your sound. And I'd really love for them to stop following that hurt, follow that, uh, like, you know, like, stop following that pattern. So I'd love for them to really understand where they're coming from, to really figure out their own sound. Maybe it's different. Maybe they're doing something different from what they hear every day. Even that makes a lot of difference. So it's just like be unique and do not be exactly, afraid of exactly. Exactly. I feel like that's that's that. Because the moment you follow the herd and then like okay, the herd gets lost and you're lost also. You, it's, it doesn't make sense. So if you stand alone and you're strong and you have like a very, uh, you're positive there. Nothing's going to move you. That that's true. That's very true actually. When uh, these days, when someone is trying to be someone else, exactly. I mean, in a world full of that, it is uh, very brave. For someone to stand tall and just be themselves, just exactly. like you, and I, it's really, really excellent to be that. And it takes a lot of heart and a lot of courage to do so. So, um, sorry, tell us about something about maybe one of your songs that you've written, which is the closest to your heart. Okay. Uh, this this particular song is called "What's Left of Me Now." It's on the on our album, Fourth Elements album. It speaks about uh, domestic violence. So. Uh, I wouldn't say I've seen it firsthand, but I am so sure from a, me being a woman, I would, I resonate with when I hear stories or when I watch documentaries, I really resonate with uh, women who've gone through a lot in their lives, right? Especially at home. Like, and uh, so that song is very, very special to me. Uh, do you want me to talk something about it? Yes, or like, definitely. Uh, so, to that. yeah, it's, it talks about domestic violence. It speaks about uh, when the woman, I mean, the wife is always coming home to a drunk man and, you know, like, she's mm. always like, what fault does she have? Like, the only thing that she's doing is be there for her family and for her husband. She's being the good wife that she is. Although she doesn't, uh, like, mean, like, she's trying her best in life to be, be there for, be the there for just be, right? And then she, like, she doesn't deserve all of this. The and the why I speak about this is she has the option, she has the choice to move out, but she can't. I think I a lot of women can't because they they feel like they are chained there, mm -hmm. right? And to move out, they they get this backlash from the society or from people like that because we're constantly thinking about what will people, people think, think of and me, say it, yeah. right? So yeah, that is one that is one song that really resonates and I love and I think it speaks to a lot of women. I think uh, a woman out there who've gone through a lot, a, a lot, yeah. So uh, with your permission, could I please request you to maybe sing just like you know two lines of that? Okay, one second, if I can think. I try to get things right Though you pretend and go drinking again Cause I try to talk But you shut the door And this is what's left to me now 
So thank Your you. Your voice <laughs> gives me goosebumps. Thank I you. mean, that is so wonderful. Thank you. It's just like I could meditate listening to your oh song. Oh my God. It's <laughs> that lovely. That's thank really, you so really much. wonderful. So, so that song and you've formed with your... Yeah, band. I wrote this. Uh, I wrote this and then uh, usually when I write, I, I have the lyrics ready. And then I go to Bari Bar's place and then he does the music. So together we write. So and then when once that's ready, we invite everyone to, mm. you know, jam along or maybe see where we can change things or see where I can change some lines and things like that. So it's a collective thing. So it's nice to work like that. You know, it's not just, OK, you are playing this line, you are playing not like that. Yeah, so everything's collective. Strict. Exactly. It's free. Your music so is very free. It has to be. Yeah. I think music just has to set you free. It's not like. You have to Holding do this, you have to back. do it. Exactly, yes. right? So music is one, like I said, music is meditation. You have to be free in whatever that you do. It's like, it's very important. That is, that is true. So you've not just performed like, you know, in our state, you've performed internationally as well in many places. Like, so what has given you the best experience? I mean, you know, interacting with the crowd mm. and h how did you interact and how did you take, what did you learn? Like, you know, you've given them your voice and your song, you've given them a story. Mm -hmm. So what did, what, what did they give you back and what did you take back from, from different places that you've been to? You've traveled so much and you've met new people. I'm sure you keep meeting new people. So how does that bring about a change in your life or what token does that leave behind? I, I've been very lucky to be able to travel abroad and places like that. I feel like the one thing that I really appreciate about the people abroad is their appreciation for artists. Like, I met a I met a lady in Serbia where, where they have like, and I asked her, what do you study? Here in India, we have like, oh, science, maths and everything. Yeah. Some basic subjects. Arts, commerce. Exactly, and right? Science. And then like, she said, gym, gymnastics. It's like, so she just goes to gym, uh, like, I mean like, uh, school for gymnastics. So their, pre, their appreciation for art and artists. So every time I go abroad and I like sing in front of people, I just I can just tell that they really appreciate you. Even though like you might say, oh, my God, she looks very cold and this like that. That person looks not so nice. But their appreciation for artists is something that I really appreciate. And I think that's what I take back home every time I go abroad and then I come back home so happy because I feel appreciated. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't personally come up to you and say, wow, you sang so beautifully or your band was great or even if they don't come up and say that to you. I just feel appreciated. And that's the reason why I really love traveling or like playing in front of people or singing in front of people. It's just the feeling of being appreciated because you rarely get that here. And that's a great, that's an amazing feeling, I exactly. suppose. I mean, you know, and performing in front of a crowd and when you see like, you know, you're singing something and because the main reason, because you write down your own song, you put in your heart and soul into it. And then you see like, you know, a crowd, a huge crowd, like, you know, they're, they're, they're just moving, like, you know, their soul, they're, they're grooving to your, to your music and to your sound. I think that's really, really exactly. lovely. And I'm sure like, you know, your band also keeps you like a gem. I mean, every one of them, they're, they're a gem of a person. And it's just, it's beautiful how you've come in together into, you know, into the entire band. And for the fact that you are always open to new people, exactly. to have new members every time. There's nothing rigid exactly. and there's nothing like tied up into mm -hmm. your band. So any, maybe anyone that you would love to work with, maybe if you had the chance? Hmm. It could be someone international or someone from, oh, definitely. Like, you know, from international. Europe. I think I would really, really want to work with... Uh, Oh, there, there are just a ton of them. I would obviously, if my, if I ever, if I manifest and really dream well, then obviously I want to work with Joss Stone. <laughs> but to be realistic, if I speak with someone from India, I think mm -hmm. I'd really love with, uh, I'd love to work with Vasundara V. She's a brilliant, brilliant. Uh, yeah, she's also a very dear friend. She's a very dear friend, and I'd really love to work with her. So I've said this also. I think it was last year when we had another interview, like almost like this. I, I, I spoke about her because she is such a beautiful person. I think she really inspires me to become better. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, she's someone that I'd really love to work with. But India has such brilliant uh, musicians now. Yeah, do. yeah, so anyone, anyone under the sun, as long as like, uh, you know, like... It's important it, to have it, someone like exactly. that who inspires you and pushes yeah. you for that. So what is maybe now your, like your future plan My, for now? I don't think ahead. 
I really, that's one thing that I don't want to do also because I'm constantly, because I'm the type of person who weighs the pros and cons of everything, mm -hmm. right? But that's something that I'm trying to not think about because I want to be in the moment and just appreciate everything that's around me. The future, let it, let it have its own trouble or let it have its own thoughts. I'll get there, it's okay. But I just want to move ahead. I just want to move ahead with a lot of love, with a lot of clarity. So that's the only thing I want for the future, just for me to look at it. And with, to take your Yeah, exactly, along. exactly. Yeah, I mean, and like, yeah. just, just be, you know, as long as I have peace and I'm calm there, I'm good. What's the age group that you teach, like, you know, as a teacher? Oh, wow, that is, I, my youngest student is four years old. Oh, the, my. The, exactly, and like, it, it's, it's funny though, but then they're so dedicated. It just shows that they love music so mm -hmm. much, you know. And uh, the oldest one, if I'm not mistaken, is just a year younger than I am. Hmm, that's, that's how do you take that? Like, you know, I'm sure teaching a child is way more difficult than teaching someone like, you know, who's an adult because they, most of the time, they can get their homeworks exactly. done. But someone you said as young as four. Oh, I know, right? They it's can be stubborn. Or they can, like... like it's, but they're so sweet. It's like... I always... Like I said, I, I always thought I would never be able to teach because I'm like, okay... Uh, I snap very easily sometimes, but I've not snapped once also because I'm just like looking at them, like looking in awe. I'm like, wow, like, you know, this is actually happening. This is real. So, and it, they're so, they're so sweet. They're so appreciative of what I do. And I, one thing that I really appreciate about the younger generation, the younger students also, it's like how dedicated they are in mm, that age, you know, it's like, it's, so it's really inspiring. Like, I'm inspiring them in return they're inspiring me too and I was like what when I was four years old I don't think I'd be able to do this at all like it's it's the dedication and it just shows that times are changing you know and then like it's so beautiful to watch them grow and I'm so so glad that I get to watch them grow musically so yeah that's one thing I that's how I look at it if I'm looking at it like oh my god just sit still I really hope you weren't like a monkey like you know I keep all of that aside I just look at how beautiful that this is going to be for them, no? So I'm really excited for them. So uh, with your class, do you always like stick to what's like, you know, just go by the ABC in the book or you, you add, you try to make it a little Like more I fun said, I incorporate a lot of my experiences there, like, uh, because let's say, like figuring out your own style is not written in a book. Mm -hmm. Figuring out your own sound is not written in a book. So I try to incorporate all of this when I'm teaching. Even though they have to know the basics of, uh, of music, like, okay, what, what note is this, mm -hmm. what note is that, right? Uh, so I try to incorporate whatever that I go through and learn throughout the years of my experience. I try to incorporate that into that. So it makes it a, lit, uh, it makes it a, lot, a lot of difference. It has a lot of difference. So but then with, with online classes, like, you know, because you're not there physically mm -hmm. teaching music, and how does it work, like, with online classes? Like, with other subjects, I get it, like... Some teachers they just send in notes, but exactly. for music you cannot do that. Exactly. You can't just send them so, notes and like, yeah, my, make them by heart that. I just, uh, so one thing is, I, uh, this is how I teach. I teach them exercises and like I do a little bit of explanation. I'm quite dedicated, let me tell you. I record the exercises on my phone and send it to them. That's a lot of work. <laughs> I do, but I'm like, work. exactly. But uh, I think that's the only way. It, I, I feel like, especially because these days everything you hear is what mm -hmm. you sing. Everything is... When you hear something, it resonates and it, it stays with you. It's not something that you... I mean, who, how can a four-year-old read also? Like? Yeah, that's true. So I record what I sing and I record the exercises or maybe write it down to the bigger ones I write it down and then I just send across my recordings. That, that's, that's wonderful. So you you have your classes every day? Yeah. Okay, so, so once maybe, like, you know, the world is changing. Or we don't know exactly, like you said, there's no point actually thinking or, or putting so much pressure mm -hmm. to the future, which yeah. is still unknown to exactly. us. But once the, suppose this lockdown and everything settles down, so once you get the opportunity to go there and teach, so I how will that... I haven't really thought about this either. I, I thought about it. I was like, okay, it's just raining, like, for now. Like, I... I get called all the time to go down and I'm just like, wait, like, you know, when my calling yeah. comes, I'll come. It's okay. Maybe if I'm bound to be there, I'll come. It, it, it just doesn't, I mean, like, I don't want to think about, yeah, everything has to flow, I feel. Uh, and to think ahead too much also is like, it's not a good thing. It just drains you out, you know, so, I'm, and I used to keep on telling them, you know what, let it, because even nothing is happening anywhere. Yeah. 
so once it happens i i will take the i will take the plunge and come there it's okay i'm i'm pretty okay with that so you're taking it as exactly. it comes here yeah. you're not trying to push it in just like maybe maybe if learned from writing doing that to your second book yeah. maybe you're just trying to exactly just take, take it slow, slow yeah. and everything so any like new songs or anything you're working on now right now well, i'm not really working on songs per se i but i do write i do i write quite a bit and uh maybe i can read that to you yeah sure i would love to okay am i allowed to look at my phone <laughs> this is something that i wrote uh, i think this was 3 days or 4 days ago so this um, yeah anyway cool we would love to hear some of your work that's I mean, yeah i'm sure our viewers would love to know that so too. this is what i wrote i think yeah 21st of october actually not 4 days ago this is the most recent one so it's uh, so basically this this writing is a, about how a, so when a person feels really small right mm -hmm. i think it, of course we always feel very small or feel very little and when especially when we're kept in front of someone who's like way advanced in life right i feel that i used to feel that a lot especially when i go for parties or like when i see someone so learned and so educated and so ahead of his mm -hmm. time and like it's natural for anybody to feel little mm -hmm. it's True. natural for anybody to feel little and then that this writing is from is about that okay so it's my perception or like how i see this yeah. person who's feeling very very small so it says Every drop of rain stood still for me from the moment you held me and called me beautiful and with time my fear stopped making sense everything i believed and perceived about destiny passed beyond my imagination when in you i saw an entirely new universe you stood in front of me with your eyes so humble i strangely could read your pain if only you knew how every breath that escaped your lips had the power to heal parts of me that were broken you'd know that pain is beautiful but it isn't important in all of your dreams and your longings for life and how deeply you care for the people who revolve and evolve around you i wanted to never be away from you and it was in that moment that i wished for god's invigorating power to change the perceptions you have of you that if for even a moment you could radiate me brighter than the stars you start to believe that you are the moon the oceans and still waters as beautiful as the universe i see in your eyes i hope you find the courage to trust me when i say this to you you're not just okay you're beyond okay wow that's thank you. amazing <laughs> thank you it's actually it touches your soul thank and you so much you should never <laughs> ever stop writing exactly that's what i don't want to do all so. you're doing and i think we will really really be exciting like you know it'll be really exciting for people and we'll be waiting for your second book thank you i i hope so too i'm definitely going to start working on it as soon as it comes to me that's because that's as i said right in the beginning your your poems people can they're not just like something not just not saying like other poems are boring or something like that but they can actually sing along they can they can just just flow it's just like like you know the cold river in a hot sunny day like you know they're just there you have your feet and the water and it's just so lovely like you know that feeling you you give that with each of your word which Thank is you. there and it's just so amazing Thank you. it's really really lovely we will be really really be waiting for sara's second book and all of you must read her first book as well because it's amazing so sara i mean i'm sure people see it like you've gotten it very easy being from this age of 15 you like you know you've kicked off your your career you've you've started your career and everything was it always that easy or have you had your share of hardships and overcoming fears nothing is easy of course especially if you believe in something that you do i mean wholeheartedly nothing comes easy because obviously people have a lot of dif uh, differences right and some uh, it's very difficult to accept that people are on their own journey as well so you always have i think like for me my hopes turned into expectations mm -hmm. and expectations are always bad right you always can't expect something good out of everybody so naturally uh, for me everything 
I wouldn't say it was oh, very difficult. I had to go through so much. No, of course, I took it with a lot of pride. Whatever that I, I took it with a lot of pride, whatever that I wanted to do, I had a lot. I believed in it. So I just believed that, you know what, it's, if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, it's okay. There, uh, I had that attitude from day one, you know, if it works out, it'll work out. Doesn't, it's okay. I'll always, I'll always find something else to do. Move on. So yeah, naturally, it wasn't always easy, especially being in a band uh, and playing a different set of music and things like that. It, the people, like, if I'm being very, very honest, I think in, in Shillong, it, I think it was very recent that people have started listening to Neo Soul or like jazz, let's just say that. And then uh, if I'm talking about that, then yeah, we had a lot of hardships and a lot of difficulties trying to get shows because it's, if you've kept yourself out there mm -hmm. to like, okay, I'm going to become a musician, I'm going to earn from it. That was very difficult, like in the start, like you just couldn't really earn from it, you from know, it, yeah. if I'm talking about earning from music and uh, that was very I think it we just believed in it so much that it's just opened its pathways for us and even if we're not getting a lot out mm -hmm. of it it's we were we are we're quite okay with it because it's okay to, exactly to be there it's not like okay oh huge, like a huge sum of sum of money we're getting for one show it's there are times when we have to play for a very very small amount but it's just the joy of doing yeah. what we do so uh, doing what we do like doing it with wholeheartedly mm -hmm. instead of doing a very like okay half-hearted job elsewhere where it pays very well like you're not you're not feeling yourself completely right you don't you don't feel good to there. find joy yeah. in what you do yeah something so, so important i think uh, that uh, of course the difficulties are there but it's just the joy of doing what you love and doing it wholeheartedly and That's even if true. you don't get a lot from it it's okay at least i went there and did mm -hmm. what i love so yeah i think one i believed in what i did so much that even if it doesn't give me a lot i'm still very okay with what i have so yeah so is there, Sarah, is there anything else that, you know, you would, uh, a message for the youth and for the people who are facing such hardships or who are trying to grow? Not, not maybe just, maybe not just music as well, if anything else, because your books and they, they say a lot more about than just music. Yeah. So is there any message you would love to give to our youth? I'd love to say to everyone, uh, just believe and love what you do wholeheartedly. Like I said, even if it doesn't give you the results, instantly know that the the journey is beautiful believe in the journey so much that it doesn't really matter to you what outcome comes out of it because the journey is all that matters mm -hmm. for me if you love your journey and give it all the love you've got and believe in what you do be it writing any other art form anything if you love it with all your heart know that the price is the peace you have and the joy that you have so that's about it thank you Thank you so, so, so much, Sarah. I mean, I've had a wonderful time with you Thank today. You so much. Sharing this screen with you was lovely. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I've taken so much today from you. I've Thank learned you so, so much. much. And I'm sure our viewers also are going to get and learn so much from such a wonderful and wonderfully talented person who's beautiful. Thank as you well. so much. So thank you so much for being here with us and having us here as well thank you so I much i hope we'll meet soon and yes. i hope everything's everything becomes better and we start seeing you on stage very soon yes i really hope so too <laughs> thank, right. you so thank, you. Thank, thank you so much thank you so guys with this we come to an end of our another episode of youth program where we had a wonderful wonderful experience with sarah hoping to see you guys next time again when we come across another lovely and talented person from meghalaya until then, stay safe and see you next time. Thank you.